quick disclaimer before we get into the video. The OBS guide I'm about to provide is meant specifically for live streaming to YouTube. On top of that, it's also meant for anyone who live streams using an AMD graphics card. However, I will also be providing some good tips, tricks, and settings that can help you improve your stream quality, no matter what encoder you use throughout this video. So I highly suggest you stick around until the end. All right, now that I've made my intentions clear, I'd like to show you something. This was my stream quality about a year ago. Pretty terrible, I know. It's not as a result of bad internet or low bitrate, and I haven't made the quality intentionally worse for the sake of this video either. Matter of fact, I'll leave a link to the stream down below in the description if you'd like to verify. You should also hit that subscribe button whilst you're down there. I'm just saying. Anyways, this is what my stream quality looks like now. Everything is more crisp and clear with no blurry pixels under fast movement. And how did I achieve this? With just a few simple settings in OBS and on YouTube itself. It's also important to note that you won't be able to achieve this if you don't make changes on both OBS and YouTube. So again, I highly suggest watching through the entirety of this video. For starters, let's go over the changes you'll need to make in OBS. Simply open up your settings and head over to the video tab. What we want to do here is ensure that we are streaming at a 16 by 9 resolution. Whether you stream in 720p, 1080p, 1440p or higher, you have to use a 16 by 9 ratio. If you play on an ultra wide monitor or if you use a monitor that has a lower resolution, let's say for example a 4 by 3 monitor, then you'll need to change your base resolution to 1920 by 1080. I would not suggest going below this resolution even if you are only streaming in 720p and if you're streaming at a higher quality then you could set this to a bigger resolution as long as it sticks to a 16 by 9 ratio. The reason why we do this is to provide the best viewing experience for the viewer. But what if you play a game in a different ratio? Well, if you play something like Counter-Strike 2 in a 4x3 ratio with outstretched resolution, then I highly suggest making use of the extra screen space. Place your webcams and overlays in the space around your game rather than over it. On the other hand, what if you use stretch resolution over a wide monitor? Unfortunately, there's not much you could do here other than having the image fill your screen. Viewers will not be able to see your screen the same way you do, and in some extreme cases, it can look rather wonky. But keep in mind that you are here to entertain and just because you prefer having your eyes going two ways at once doesn't mean everyone else has to. Make it but as for the output resolution, you want this to match your base resolution to ensure higher quality. If these two resolutions match, then you don't need to change anything in the downscale filter. As for your FPS, you need to use the common FPS values option, which you can choose on the left. And I highly recommend streaming in either 60 or 30 FPS. Anything lower than 30 FPS will look choppy and anything higher than 60 FPS will result in diminishing returns and will just make your PC performance suffer. All right, but now that we've gotten our video settings out the way let's move over to our output tab here we'll of course be focusing on the streaming settings for starters the audio track is up to personal preference if you'd like to know how audio tracks work then you could check my full guide on them by clicking the card in the top right of your screen or by checking out my obs guides playlist which is linked in the description as for the audio encoder we'll be using the ffmpeg aac encoder for the video encoder we'll be making use of the new amd hw H265 HEVC encoder. This encoder is excellent for streaming to YouTube as it provides much higher quality whilst also using up less of your GPU's resources. It unfortunately does not work on several other platforms like Twitch or Kick, but honestly, that's their loss. If you have an older AMD GPU, however, you could still use the H264 AVC encoder. Or if you use a NVIDIA graphics card or stream off of your CPU, then you can use those encoders. The HEVC encoder is just the best overall for AMD users so if you can use it then definitely do so. As for the rescale output option we'll leave this unchecked as we wanted to match the resolution we selected in the video tab. Moving along we'll be changing some of the more intricate encoder settings. First off we want to be using CBR as our rate control. Some people may suggest using VBR or even CQP but I disagree. VBR is generally only good for rendering out videos in order to keep their file sizes small whilst also maintaining quality. If you used in real time, VBR can cause a major loss in quality. CQP on the other hand, despite providing better quality than CBR, can be very taxing on your computer and is actually not permitted by YouTube outside of video uploads. Long story short, use CBR as your rate control. Next up we have bitrate. Now this is something I cannot actually guide you in as it's entirely up to what quality you stream in and how good your internet is. YouTube however recommends using the following minimum and maximum speeds for various different resolutions. 
frame rates and depending on what encoder you use. I will leave a link in the description to this information page if you'd like to check it out. I myself stream in 1440p 60fps at 11,500 bitrate which is actually pretty low but I'll explain why a little bit later on in this video when we cover the YouTube settings. Next up we have the keyframe interval option. You generally want to always set this to at least two if you want to stream on YouTube and never exceed a keyframe interval of four. This is also recommended by YouTube itself in the information page I have linked. Simply put your keyframe interval balances out your quality with your bitrate. The lower the interval the lower the quality. The higher the interval the more performance bandwidth or storage you'll use. It's a bit more complicated than that but you don't really have to dig so deep into it. Next up we have our quality preset. I personally prefer using the quality option for this one but depending on your PC specs you can either use balance or speed with the quality option providing of course the best quality and the speed option providing the worst quality. Not necessarily bad but definitely noticeable. Last but not least we have the AMF slash FFmpeg options. I won't even lie this setting is beyond my scope of knowledge. All I know is that these options directly affect how the encoder operates on your GPU or something like that. I believe that Nvidia has a lot more options to choose from when using their GPUs as a streaming utility but with AMD you have to set a lot of these options manually. Optimal settings may vary depending on individual hardware configurations but I found that this line of code works best for me so I'll leave it down below in the description as well for you to simply copy and paste. Also have you hit that like button yet? we're like halfway through the video already surely you must be enjoying it okay we're pretty much done with obs now i won't be going into detail about any of the audio options or anything like that because i want to keep this video focused on streaming quality i also don't want this video to be like 30 minutes long so let's move over to the youtube side of things as you probably know you can't simply stream on youtube it's a bit more complicated than that i mean you technically can but i wouldn't recommend just hitting the go live button and calling it a day so what we're going to do is open up youtube in our browser and then click on the little create icon in the top right we'll then click on the go live option and from there we'll be taken to the live studio we then want to click on the schedule stream option on the right and set up a stream or if you already have one set up like i do then you want to click on it once you've completed the previous steps you should be in what i like to call the control room for the setup stream here you'll be able to see a ton of different options and stats but what we want to focus on is the stream key options under the stream settings tab my stream key as you can see is called 1440 alongside rtmp and 1440p in brackets basically my stream key is named 1440 uses the rtmp protocol and is specifically for streaming in 1440p your stream key however may be called the default stream key alongside rtmp and variable in brackets as shocking as it may sound this small option right here may be the exact reason as to why your 4k stream looks like it got dumped in a blender so let's change that for starters click on your stream key you should now see a few options create new stream key manage stream keys and just below it all of your available stream keys that's a lot of stream keys click on the create new stream key option and you should now see this pop up here you can name and give your new stream key a description further down you'll find the streaming protocol option you want to make sure that this is set to rtmp and not hls even further down you'll find the stream resolution option and a checkbox to turn on manual settings check that box you should now be able to change your stream's resolution and turn on the 60 fps option for starters you want to change your stream resolution to a minimum of 1440p and if you plan on streaming at 60 fps then make sure to tick the 60 fps option box but why you may ask allow me to let you in on a little secret. YouTube uses different server based encoders for 1440p and higher compared to 1080p and lower. These higher quality encoders are not only newer but also far superior to the lower quality encoders. I personally don't own a 1440p monitor nor do I technically stream in 1440p. I stream in 1080p. If you were to use the default stream key YouTube would pick up that your stream is in 1080p or lower and therefore use the older encoders. Dumping your quality due to the encoders limitations. However However, by manually setting your stream key to 1440p you will force YouTube to basically use the new encoders giving you a major boost in overall quality. Personally there is no difference in quality from watching my streams in 1080p compared to watching them in 1440p. The option is just there because the stream key is set to 1440p. I could stream in 360p but the option for 1440p will still be there. It'll just look terrible either way but nowhere near as terrible as it would look if I were to use the default stream key. Or 
or one set to 1080p and lower. The only notable drawback from this is you cannot stream with ultra low latency. But it's not even a loss as I would recommend streaming in normal or low latency anyways. And a quick bonus tip for you guys. Similar to how live streaming works, if you were to render and upload your videos in 1440p rather than 1080p or lower, you will get the same results and improve your overall video quality on YouTube. Pretty neat I would say. But that is going to be all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and found it to be useful. Again, if you guys are new to the channel and want to see more content like this, then be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Also, if you guys did like my new OBS streaming guide, then be sure to hit that like button down below as it always helps out my content. But that's going to be all for me. It's been your boy King K. Peace.